Nobody doesn't want kids. People cannot want kids. It's a thing. That is not a thing. Well, it's my thing. I've known since high school that I did not want to be a mother. At one point, you just declared that if I ever want to have grandchildren, don't look at me. I didn't really ever want kids, but I always assumed I would have them. I kept asking myself, is this gonna happen to me? Does it have to happen? What does it mean to live in a world where motherhood is our destiny? And what happens if we say no? Remember, your biological clock is ticking. I gotta have a baby. I gotta have a baby. I gotta have a baby. Do you have a biological clock? Not ticking within me, um, so I, the answer would have to be no. There's no biological reason for that to happen. You could list any number of honors and degrees and somebody will still think that you're not fully accomplished if you haven't had a child. Motherhood has increased in value yet again. It's almost fetishized in our society. This is the real solution to climate change. Babies. Nations need childbirths. Babies are good for the economy. This is by design. It's like, I'm not missing anything. I didn't forget to have kids. I'm just not interested. To have somebody tell you, you don't know what's best for you is extremely condescending and insulting. Never question my African identity because I'm child free. You can be an aunt or an uncle to your friend's children and you'll be fine. In fact, you'll be great. Don't forget to take your pill. I won't. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. We can start. But, um, uh, it's nice to meet you. I actually, I, I, I was like, why do I know? I'm sorry. It's just that I should be that able to figure me. out how to prevent that. I should be doing that. Uh, that's a spam call. Anyway, um, I know, and I was like, why do I know her name? And then I looked you up and I'm like, oh yeah, because I, I, your last movie for some reason caught documentary caught my attention. I can't imagine why that would be, but. Uh, <laughs> so do you want to tell us the name of that uh -huh. documentary, your last feature documentary? Yeah, my last feature documentary is called How to Lose Your Virginity. Which yes, I do remember that one. Attention and tends to get me banned from high school screenings at the same oh, time. Oh, you didn't think that through, did you? No, not really, to be honest. Um, it's not really a how-to. Uh, and I yeah. have to give that disclaimer sometimes when I'm screening at colleges, because like if people showed up just to get that information, <laughs> I don't want them, their expectations to be uh you know right. sort of misguided uh, yeah but, irony um, irony can be your friend but it can also kick in the in whatever <laughs> you know because yeah that's i never thought of that but my gosh yeah that must have been a headache for you it's all no it's it's all fun it's not it, not, it was nothing bad it was, but you had a good run with that what was the world premiere for that that, that was uh duck nyc yeah, that was, it was probably if it's maybe in its uh, first or second uh, get, get year i'm gonna guess Duck and, yeah, uh, the film was finished in 2013 and it premiered later that year in 2013 at Doc yeah. NYC. And, and I'm thinking Doc NYC was brand spanking new is my point. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Um, it's probably around 10 anyway, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, your last document came out in 2013. Well, it's been eight, eight years, eight, nine years. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, can one. I can I tell people what the film's actually about so they don't wander off like wondering the new one? The, no, the, the that was your virginity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, uh, you you have a point because people <laughs> when they see your new one they're going to want to look at the other one too. Yeah. Yeah. So how right. to lose your virginity is really about the sort of mythology and the misogyny around virginity, especially for women, and it was inspired by the abstinence until marriage. Uh, bullshit. Can I say that here? Marriage? No, don't please don't no. say the word. <laughs> um, 
So it was inspired by that. I started working on it at the height of the abstinence until marriage programs. And mostly because I just sort of realized that we were lying to our teenagers all the time. And yeah. uh, right. so I just started investigating and it went yeah. My and my this podcast began as the pro abstinence podcast. And I just thought, what am I doing? That's a mistake. I should change it and make it about interview people about their beautiful, their great documentaries, like How to Lose Your Virginity and in my yeah. so-called selfish life, which is the new one. And by the way, it really dovetails very nicely into the new documentary. And you're grappling with similar issues around how other people try to control women's bodies, whether we're either in a nefarious way or otherwise. Thank God as a society and as a culture, we've moved beyond that. <laughs> yes. So, so we're so yes, fortunate. We've evolved a lot. Um, do you have any? Do you have any Texas or Florida or Mississippi screenings? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I, I want you to show that movie exclusively in those those states. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, with my previous film, I was really excited when the Salt Lake City Public Library System bought it for the libraries in Salt Lake. So I thought, oh, that's really cool. That's good. They should talk about. It. Uh, female sexuality more <laughs> in Salt Lake. So uh, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, it, yeah. it doesn't even have to show there. I, I tend to get like these press inquiries from um, really conservative student newspapers. Mm. And um, they want to review it to trash it. Yes. And their big, their big thing is like getting me to admit I'm a feminist. Oh, <laughs> It's like a really big get for them. And I'm like, <laughs> it's on my website. I mean, come on. <laughs> but like Therese Schechter, who describes herself as a feminist, you know. Sort of what do you think when Sarah Palin self-identifies as a feminist? What do you, what do you, how do you react to that? Wow, uh, that was a long time ago. Well, um, she did it recently again. Well, she did? Yeah, saying that, you know, being anti-abortion and, and, I, or I should say not anti-abortion, anti-choice. I mean, let's, mm -hmm. let's call it what it is. Yeah. And she still thinks of herself as a feminist. Well, she probably defines feminists quite differently than I do. Right. Um, I don't think she has any regard for the welfare of other women around her um, or men for that matter. Um, that doesn't sound super feminist to me, uh, but, you know, there are a lot of super conservative women who identify as feminists for their own reasons. Um, and they're really not. You, you really can't be a feminist and try to curtail the rights of other women to your specifications. That just doesn't, doesn't track very well, I don't think. Um, I, um, I'm glad we're having this conversation. I didn't expect to have it, but it's, it, um, I, I'm happy to do it. And, um, and I want to talk about my so-called uh, selfish life and the word selfish is the kind of the ironic word in there because um it's uh, i'm going to give it kind of like the little brief you know synopsis or description and, and then we can link it to what we were just talking about because i think i I'm, I'm interested in how you you arrived at your own version of feminism because your films are so specific and mm -hmm. um my so-called life uh, women who choose not to reproduce like they don't, right? And the pro, and we see, we know that the pressures are there from all angles. Yes. Right? But it's yes. a, is, do you feel like this is a political film? Yes. <laughs> yes. But there's a personal. Yeah. It's, a, know, it's a, yeah. I think my, you know, to, to quote feminists of another era, the personal is political. Okay. Um, so our personal experiences, when shared collectively, become very political experiences because they are uh, systemic. That's a good word. They're systemic. They're not of our own doing. They are already present in society. So um, a lot of these things that we think are like personal problems are actually societal problems. So yes, I think that uh, I think that it is a political film. And it's political about the idea that you really should not force someone to bear a child. <laughs> That's just, you should not do it. And you should let people pick their own paths and you should give them all the information they need to make that, uh, that choice and all the options they need to make the choice. So yes, 
politically, I feel like that's all coming from our society, which has, has been constructed uh, over the millennia uh, to make sure that there's a steady stream of uh, male babies <laughs> that look just like the people in power. And if they're not male babies, then they're female babies who could potentially produce male babies sometime in the future. Um, that's, kind of, that's kind of what we live in, uh, to mm. be perfectly <laughs> frank. Uh, and if you can step out of that, that's great, but it's, a, it's, it's definitely on purpose. If you take the stigma away and allow <laughs> however many, uh, you know, women uh, to, to, you know, decide they don't want to have babies and they don't feel there's tremendous pressures from all, you know, from uh, advertising and from <laughs> every, every bit, you know, part of the culture, uh, maybe we won't give people won't give birth to Donald Trump's and Bill Cosby's and Jeffrey Epstein's and people like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we've had generations of women up to kind of recently where it was really like you, uh, where it was, I'll finish my thought where you're kind of being punished for having the deciding you, you or thinking that you allow that you don't want to necessarily have children. So you have one woman in your film who, uh, I, I don't remember her name, but she she um, was, I guess it was back in the 60s or 70s, probably 70s, where she, right? And um, she and her, they were on 60 Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. No spoilers now. Right. <laughs> right. But yes, I'm usually were... very hyper aware of it, but I'm not thinking, yeah, she did. She, right. She may or may not have the children. We don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. She was minutes. on 60 Minutes. Yeah. Go ahead, dear, go ahead. Oh, she was on 60 Minutes uh, because um, she was on 60 Minutes basically telling her in-laws that, sh that she and her husband didn't want to have children. Um, and that didn't end well on a personal level and on a larger level. Yeah, and on an editing room level, but... Yes, <laughs> that too, that too. They didn't let her husband say a word. I mean, he... I noticed that. <laughs> I mean... This isn't in the film, but her husband spoke a lot during this okay. thing, and they just cut him out completely. It's saying crazy. anything, he just sat there and didn't say anything. According to sixty minutes, which gives the perception though she is like making she. It's her decision. He didn't have anything to contribute to that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, she's the one kind of discussing d discussing it with her in laws. How, yeah. so, right. Yes. So where did you? Did you were most of this your your subjects your characters in your film or were they through personal relationships? Did you or through like one degree of separation that type of thing? Um, I th they're really from all over. Like like the Marsha who you were talking about with sixty minutes is kind of legendary oh. within the community within the child-free community. We can talk about that word later if you want, but within the sure child-free community. Yeah, I mean, she's she's a she's an OG. I mean, she was doing this, <laughs> you know, I stand on her shoulders completely. Um, so I knew her story and I knew I wanted her in the film. And also she's just a great storyteller. She's so she's a great personality. Um, some people, uh, some people were were sort of like experts in the area who I respected their work a lot and I just wanted them to be part of the film. Sometimes it was people were recommended to me. Uh -huh. um, other times I met one person on a Facebook, Child Free Facebook group. I was uh, looking around uh, for someone who was um, trying to get her tubes tied, which is a big thing. It's very, very hard to get any kind of voluntary sterilization procedure if you don't already have like three kids and. Or 35. It's, it's well, why is that? Uh, oh, I know. Um, the well, it's very hard because doctors make judgments based on what they think your life should look like or will look like. So and, they're buying into and per per perpetrating or perpetuating rather, not perpetrating, but per perpetuating this, this, this issue. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to completely slam them. They feel like their patient will regret it. 
you know, will regret getting this procedure, which really isn't reversible for women. Um, and they feel like if a, if a woman in her 20s shows up and says, I know I don't want children and I don't want to be on birth control anymore. And, and um, you know, they, they say, I can't, I can't do this because you're not old enough or because you haven't had children yet or things like that, which actually isn't true. Like legally, all you need is to be the age of consent, like that you would consent to any medical procedure. Um, but they make it seem like that's like the law in the state of Michigan or something. I'm constantly on, law, on social media trying to like correct this, you know, when people are like, well, I live in Michigan and apparently you have to be 35 before they'll do it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> your doctor's lying to you. Um, some doctors are awesome though. Some doctors do it. Some doctors don't love doing it, but they will respect their patients. Wishes. Well, I imagine most, yeah, because I, I can, I, I mean, there are probably are cases where some people meet, then they meet, I, I don't know, but you figure this isn't a decision that anybody would make lightly. I mean, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's and, yeah, but I can understand why it's maybe the most controversial part of this, this is story, maybe. It can be controversial. So Lauren, who's in our film, who's trying to get this procedure done, when we meet her, she's 19. She's in university and that's quite young. Um, I have no doubt that she knows exactly what she's doing, but uh, it's young for anyone to look at that and go, you know, what? Uh, so she's really interesting. She's really smart. She's thought it through. She, 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 she shows us in the film this very, very long letter that she writes with all of these different considerations in it. And she cites scientific studies and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I did meet her on one of the Facebook uh, child free groups because I was looking for a good character that would be going through that. Right. Um, uh, right. And I, met, but I, you know, I could so, feel as we talk about it, if I'm completely honest, I buy, buying into these things that have been that I've been so, you know, inoculated to about about also like I can say, geez, uh, what if she meets that person? And, you know, it really doesn't have a lot to do with that. No, you know, you know it's a it's a it's it's almost similar, most more similar to somebody transitioning. They feel this in a very foundational way that, that this is who they really are and they've been kind of masking it and suppressing it because of kind of societal pressure it feels like that's when they talk about it in in some ways yes i think in some ways we know ourselves and we know what we want and what feels right um and people around you don't really trust you with your own feelings um and don't think you're making right. a good choice that yeah. like Lauren points out in the film that she can do all these other things that would have far worse repercussions like joining the military you know or taking out a massive loan like like nobody will ever stop her I'm sure no one will stop her from getting some kind of massive plastic surgery breasts to be honest <laughs> the doctor's not going to say no to that but the, uh, a doctor will say no to getting her tubes tied and I will yeah. also point out, by the way, that she got her tubes tied, which means her ovaries work. They're producing eggs. Her uterus works fine also. If she did, and she won't, but if she did want to have a child, she could oh. do a sort of an IVF thing. It's, it's a rerouting. Rerouting, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if she wanted to. But, you know, it's a, it's a real spectrum of experience, like some people do decide at some point that they do want kids, even though they didn't before. Um, we're human, so we're not like machines that never change. Some people do. Um, some people go the other way. They can't have kids, they're infertile. It's, it's, it's really difficult. And then they say, okay, well, um, this isn't gonna happen. So I'm just gonna go on with my new life that doesn't have children in it. Um, I just, I think that we are human and we can change our minds, we're allowed to. But many of the people that I've met that don't want children don't tend to change their minds. They're now you, if I, if I can bring it into the, I don't know, you, I think you are, you, you start your films, you're, you, they're a little tongue, they are tongue in cheek. The tone of your films are often have a kind of whimsical 
humorous side to them, no, no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. And uh, which I think is very kind of inviting way to go into these subjects, you know. Um, and, and then you also kind of bring your own stories into, right, your, your own mm -hmm. personal life into it. Uh, I think you did, it, didn't you do it in the last film too? Yeah. I mean, in, in Virgin, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then in this yeah. one, also, you made the choice not to have children, right? Yes, it chose me. I don't remember actually choosing it, but yeah. Now, you, 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 you're correcting me, right? No, I mean, I mean, I, I don't I mind it being corrected because it, God knows it happens all the time. But I mean, uh, I, <laughs> seriously, but I'm, I'm wondering because if it's it's it is a sensitive thing. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting because I've never thought about this until this very moment when you said you chose this. And for the first time, and you can imagine how long I've been thinking about the subject, I realized I didn't actually choose it. It just was okay. who I am. See, that is the, but just that has, for me, clarified something tremendously about your movie and, and about the subject behind it, because now I get it now, like, you know, in a way, I don't think you even could have gotten it before. It's not a matter of Detroit, making a decision. It's interesting. I mean, some people do make the decision. Yes. Again, right. it's such a spectrum, but I- Especially if it's with somebody, your partner. Yeah, yeah, Some sometimes, um, you know, your partner doesn't want kids and you basically feel like your partner is more important <laughs> than having kids and okay. I think my husband was like that. He would have had kids with someone who wanted kids, but because um, we had the talk while we were dating and, yeah. uh, you know, he, he wanted to, to, you know, have a life with me, which is lovely. He's a lovely person. He comes um, across very lovely. <laughs> yeah, he's he's very nice. He has to approve any media I put in the film of him. <laughs> it's like a big. That seems fair. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Um, but you know, the interesting thing is that that I I was never really interested in kids or having kids, but I assumed I would have kids anyway. Mm. Uh, I was pretty sure I would because that's what people did. I right. didn't have any role models well, whatsoever. Right. The mer I think if the mother. What was what was her name again? Jane. I got the name wrong. The the sixty minutes. The woman on. 60 oh, Marcia. Marcia, Marcia, excuse me, Marcia. Her mother. I think it was her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Maybe her father was said. Well, it's the American way. <laughs> oh, that was a. Uh, uh, or did I get uh, it wrong? Mike Wallace <laughs> says that. Oh, he, he, kind of playing devil, devil's advocate. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Wallace then, is. is so, when are you going to have a baby? It's it's what. What's expected? What America's all about, or something like something, that. I yeah, think. I think he's. I thought he said the American way, but he may have. Yeah, it might. It uh, might be. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Well, you just had your a screening at Woodstock at the Woodstock Film Festival. Well, where did was that the premiere? Yep. Okay. Yep. Had you shown exactly. anything there before? No, I'd never been to Woodstock before. Oh. Actually, not so. any mid to the town. The village. No. No, I live in New York City, and I've never been to Woodstock. That's something. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. But what did you uh, think all of those fossilized hippies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were stored well, in ember all these years, apparently. I mean, I know people who live around there, but I haven't. I haven't been there weirdly. Uh, yeah, it was lovely. It's, it's great. Um, we kind of went all around the area checking right. things out, and I had a screening in Socrates also. Oh, very good at the new theater or at the revamped. Yeah, at the New yeah, well, Upstate was, Films uh, yeah, yeah. Theater. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah, I was up there a couple of years ago for, for the Woodstock Film Festival, and it was very lived in at the time. I don't know if they've renovated much, but. Yes, I believe that they have renovated it. Yeah, they've oh. done, I, I believe they've done a lot. And actually, um, I was the first film to screen there since they That's revamped great. it, which I didn't oh. even realize, but I was there when they turned on the marquee for the first time. Nice. <laughs> was really get over cool. there. I'm right across yeah. the river now. I, I, I'm up here now. So I'm actually doing all this. I was in New, I, I was in New York City till, you know, not that long ago, but um, you know, um, I, well, well, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. My, my so-called selfish life by Therese Schechter. Um, yes. and, and it's, do you have a couple of festivals you want to mention? Yeah, we're, we're 
uh, virtually <laughs> at Bend Film starting tomorrow, uh, which is, uh, it was supposed to be a live Where? in person in Bend, Oregon. Oh, and oh I was, Bend. Bend Where's Film. Bend Film. Uh -huh. Bend Film Festival. Gotcha. But they like say Bend Film, like one word. Okay. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be there. They were, they're so fantastic there. And uh, then they decided they were going to go virtual because Central Oregon is like a hotbed of COVID. Oh, dear. Unfortunately. Yeah. So that is virtual. Um, and then after that, uh, I think we're also virtual in St. Louis. Virtual. What is a film festival if it's virtual? I don't know. It just means know. people are, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's it, I, well, you know, I, I, it's a whole other podcast conversation we can have, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they made a, a tough decision in Bend, yeah. but it was the right decision. It is, of course. It's people safety, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. um, I heard that a festival out West were, had a run, had a bunch of COVID because they just, you know, it's it's a very insidious virus. <laughs> you can yeah. find its way. You can kind of be very, very careful. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I honestly avoided a lot of. I was at, I just went to Woodstock for a day, but I was very, very careful about stuff because I know that Mayor took great caution, precaution rather. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and I haven't heard of any problems since, so that's good. Yeah, no one's contact traced me or anything like that. So <laughs> glad. we had yeah. to show our proof of vaccination right off the bat. And uh, and then we had to wear masks when we were in the theaters. And people yeah. were really compliant, which I really appreciated. Yeah. Like they were taking it's a good area, though. We live in a good area up here. It's nice. I agree. Yeah, um, it was nice. Uh, did we get to, I mean, we, this is a, 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 you know, I think it's a great, not only a, 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 an entertaining and informational movie, but it's also a great catalyst for for conversations. I think that's one thing that you would, why, why your film in particular, you feel like, you know, it really benefits so much more for a live screenings because you get those invaluable Q and A's and, and then just hanging out in the lobby afterwards and having talks about these things because everybody can, every you know, about half the population are women, it turns out, maybe even a little bit more than half. So they, they have a lot on their mind and and finally you know there's documentaries like you're making which is i'm sure got to be a uh, uh just a breath of fresh air for for so many i think they're always i'm always meeting people who you know feel that way that they don't really want children they don't want a parent and they don't realize that other people are having the conversation right you know then then it's like oh, wow, other people are talking about this. I can't mm -hmm. believe we're talking about this, you know? Yes. So, and, and the Q&As at Woodstock were really good. Um, oh, good. Pretty much nobody left. Everyone stayed for the Q&A, which in my experience anyway, is not normal. <laughs> so that was a level of engagement that was really lovely. And, yeah. uh, and yes, there were a lot of conversations afterwards, including the volunteers at the theater. Oh, and, I, the, yeah. the, and the two female volunteers at the theater were like, we didn't even know we were volunteering for this movie, but this is a movie for us. And they were really excited. So yeah, it, uh, it's really interesting. I, I think one thing that's really important though is um, we were really careful. I think we've succeeded based on feedback, but we really didn't want this to be any kind of indictment of parenthood or motherhood. Like we have no beef with, with parents and children. Um, and we've had a lot of good feedback from parents, actually, which has been really nice. There is some affinity with the one and done uh, folks who want only children, and then they get harassed at Thanksgiving about when they're going to have another one. Um, so there is some relatability in that as well. Um, well, there's another documentary, but you, 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 yeah. you're, you, I don't think you're I think you need to move on to the next big mm -hmm. Yeah. Taboo. Mm -hmm. you Do you have ideas? a suggestion for me? Uh, no, uh, not, not, I'm going to put my, I'm going to, I'm going to think about it though. I'm going to definitely get some thoughts. Uh, I'm sure there's got to be one more big one out there for you. There is. Yeah, actually there is. I know what I'm doing next. Oh, you do. Okay. Well, no, no, no. Don't give it away, please. You it's kind to. of a no-brainer. I made a film about virginity and motherhood, so there's like one thing left to do to 
to finish the Trinity. So I don't think it's that mysterious. Okay. Maybe it is. Maybe it's mysterious. I don't know. Well, okay, so I hope it's not euthanasia, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe we should just leave it there. No, it's, it's about, I, I think I need to do something on menopause. Oh, okay. You know, um, maiden, mother, crone, you know, sort of the, the trinity. Yes, that makes more sense. Yeah, I just don't yeah. want to hear, but it's too controversial. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> menopause. I need to make the film for you, I think. So. Um. Well, I'm really, I, I honestly, I'm very happy to finally uh, meet you, even if it's virtually, um, you know, because uh, again, I do remember um, really enjoying <clears throat> the, uh, your earlier documentary. And I, I was so sure that I did something on that film, but I guess I didn't. So I made up for it this time. You did. No, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Um... Yeah, I'm really happy to have this film out in the world finally and uh, really excited about actually taking it all over the world because this conversation is happening all over the world. Right, yeah. So exactly. that's one of our big goals. And it'd be interesting to gauge the level of how taboo it is in different cultures too because I'm sure it's all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. Like India has a really vocal child-free community. Oh yeah, really well, vocal. why wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, you can sort of see, you know, on several fronts why they might. Um, right, exactly. But um, yeah, so I'm very excited to screen in India, for example. I think that'll be amazing. Thanks um, to virtual technology, we can do that now. So. Oh, so you don't get to go in person. Mm -hmm. but, okay, I understand. Again, maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. This was fun. Oh, I'm glad you had a good time. I did too. And I look forward to meeting you in person soon. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Good luck with everything. And I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll make sure you you know get a link to all that all the. But we'll we'll. we'll... Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Bye.